All right, kia ora. Good evening. Yes, it's good evening. It feels like it's uh, lunchtime in the heat up here in Te Tai Tokero. But good evening. It is, well, look at that. It's almost 20 past six and it looks like it's the mid midday up here, I tell you. But anyway, I'm really excited. I am trying out my new flash system of doing uh, liveies that uh, Vinnie Eastwood gave me. So it's, um, oh, 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 sorry, I'm getting used to it. It's one of those handheld things that you put your phone in and it's meant to move with you and do all sorts of neat things. And oh, hold on, what's going on here? And uh, very exciting. Um, unusual time for me, I'm home by myself. I've just got home from Waitangi. And uh, boy, what a week, guys. I just wanted to do a, a wrap up with you. It's coming up to the Sabbath tonight for, um, and I'm just looking forward to a great rest. But you know, kia ora Tisha, kia ora Daryl. Hey Sam, Charmaine, hey Angel, Sister Angel. Hey Charmaine, Dominica. Hey, kia ora. Hey, Adam. Hey, Joanna. Hey, Isaac. Hey, Rui Mata. To everyone that's on the road traveling back home for after yesterday's um, epic um, protest at the at Parliament, I really pray that you're driving slowly, getting home safely. Kia ora, Glenis. Hey, sis. Hey, hey, Sister Salia. Tony, Brian, Hamuera. Kia ora, brother. Tēnā koe, Liam. Hey, Liam Riley. Hey, brother. Good to catch up with you. Hey, Tanya. All right, guys. What a week. You know, we've been through a lot this week. It began um, uh, last Saturday when we started uh, with, the, uh, with the Auckland rally in March, and that was just fantastic. It really was. It was an incredible uh, day. It was a an incredible opportunity, again, to stand up and say, hey, we know what the government's doing. We're watching. We're observant. We're getting lots of people, um, lots and lots and lots of people sending us information, but we know that if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, talks like a duck, the thing's a duck. And so, um, you know, with the information that we get, and we get so much of it, guys, you just cannot believe it, the sort of filtering process that we're involved with literally every day. And, um, you know, when you get sort of, I'll talk about the nine that I know of, the nine um, informants and sources of information all saying the same thing, highly unrelated to each other, but all related to the one topic of a lockdown being planned by the government. One thing that we can, I think we can take some, um, encouragement by is that when we stand up and we let the government know that there are people in their midst in their government system letting us know things that must be a heck of a blow for them and so I'm really really pleased that um, that we stood together we decided on on Sunday evening that we would do a we would do a protest on the steps of Parliament yesterday um, in preparation for, and uh, for any sort of planned um, lockdown that they might announce today and they haven't haven't done that. But interestingly enough, another another uh, freedom fighter commentator, he um, you know commentator, not activist. There's a difference between being a commentator and an activist, and uh, sometimes you get both of them, which is myself and Vinny. Vinny gets out there and gets his hands dirty, um, and uh, this guy who's just a commentator actually said that he's heard from people in the military and the police today as well, telling them that that. Um, that the information that he's received from them was telling them that they were planning a lockdown, um, still are planning a lockdown, but it's been delayed and modified. Now we've been told the same thing by one person that's come come out of nowhere saying that, that they haven't they haven't dropped the idea of a lockdown. They've modified it. I'd like to think that's because we stood up very very loud and told them that we know what's going on and that the um, and that the that the program has been discovered and revealed by their own people. Now one of the things that's um, um, come up uh, yesterday, late yesterday afternoon, yep, January 14th, is an article on One News, tvnz.co, One News, uh, forward slash New Zealand, don't rush COVID-19 vaccine rollout, warns, guess who? The World Health Organization has said to, um, um, said to New Zealand, the New Zealand government, and I quote, you know, don't rush the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. Isn't that interesting? You, you know, I just, you know, these guys, you know, the, this is what makes our job so in, so intriguing and challenging is that you get this continual game of bat and ball with the truth and with information that they're putting out there. Yes, it's, you know, they're all talking about level four lockdown if they can prove that, um, uh, that the um, new COVID-19 virus strains of, um, from South Africa and the UK are, if they even suspect they're in the community, they're going to lock us, you know, they, these professors suggest that the government lock us up to level four, which will be absolutely disastrous, as many of you know. And then what happens the next day, you know, 
is that they, there's this article that says, you know, that the WHO are saying to this government, do not be in a hurry to roll out the vaccine. You know why they're saying that? Because they know that there's problems with it. The Centre for Disease Control in the United States has come out and said that, um, you know, they've had thousands and thousands and thousands upon thousands of serious injuries at the hands of these of these new viruses and at the hands of the people selling them and uh, distributing them to their own population, to the communities. And that's why we've been saying, you know, we, we said it on the steps of Parliament yesterday, we said it on the steps of Aotea Square in Tamaki, we do not consent in any way for the New Zealand people, whether they're aware of it or not, whether they think they've got anything to worry about or not, we do not consent to um, New Zealanders being used as guinea pigs on a vaccine that they cannot say is 100% safe. And, you know, they might say, well, it's only 10% 10, 10 risk. Well, no, well, that's 10% too much. You know, and when, again, when you look at the Centre for Disease Control and Prevention's um, um, own numbers, you can see that there's something very, very, very wrong going on with the, with the human response to this new RNA vaccine. Listen to this. Um, here's, a, here's a quote from, from this article. So this warning comes after the opposition questioned the government's lack of speed with its rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine program this week. Can you see that? How you have, you have the, the two wings of the same bird, one saying to the other part of the, of the bird, hey, you, go, you guys aren't, you're doing a rubbish job, you need to be quicker in the vaccine. And then the other, other part of the same bird goes, oh, yeah, gee, you're right, we'll, we'll work as quickly as, as, as we can on it. That's dialectic Helgelian um, thinking and, and, you know, basically a, um, an emotional and psychological operation on us. That's what they're doing. You know, you get, you know, you get the, the national government saying, hey, you guys need to hurry up with the vaccines and look like they're holding them accountable about this really important issue. And then Labour says, oh, look, we're, we're doing our best. You know, we'll, we'll come up with it. And, but when in reality, we don't want any of it. Anyway, leader of the National Party, Judith Collins, accused the government of acting too slowly, saying the vaccine rollout should be fast-tracked. Thank you, Judith. We know exactly where you sit. She says, and I quote, it is ridiculous not to have a plan to roll out the vaccines. I wonder if she's getting hers her, her, and her son and her, and her husband. It is ridiculous not to have a plan to roll out the vaccines when they're available and let New Zealanders know when they're going to be available. It's very important that the New Zealand government doesn't go asleep on this issue and declare victory well before it's time to declare any victory at all. Hmm. Is there a victory in crashing our economy and destroying rights and freedoms and loads of businesses and people's lives? I don't think so. However, the World Health Organization is advising New Zealand not to rush its vaccination program, but instead advising New Zealand to take its time and roll out the vaccine properly. It's a lot more than simply getting the vials, getting the needles. There are, and I'm quoting here, there are many things that have to be done very well at every point in the chain for a really effective vaccination program, Dr. Margaret Harris from the World Health Organization told One News. Highlighting the success of New Zealand at controlling the virus, Harris says, if New Zealand wants to continue to stamp out COVID-19 and protect the health system, hmm, I thought it was about protecting people, uh, the rollout needs to be meticulously planned. If you have the luxury of low transmission, you, you can also have the luxury of planning your rollout of the vaccine very well, and that's very, very important. Don't expect it to be super duper fast, end quote. So what she's saying is, what if you look between the, and the, the lines of what she's saying, is she's saying, look, you guys don't have any issues really in your country. Um, you don't have to be seen to be rushing the deployment of this vaccine. Just take your time and make sure it's thorough and that you vaccinate your population properly. Well, sorry, because every New Zealander that I've spoken to, even people that um, don't want to be openly associated with a freedom movement, are saying there's no blinking way they're going to be taking a vaccine at all. So these people are arguing about the wrong things. You know, and, and, and you know, this, this article is quite deceptive, right? Because it says up the top here, don't rush the COVID-19 vaccine rollout. They're not saying because it's unsafe and they're not referring to the CDC numbers. <laughs> they're saying so that you can do it properly and thoroughly. And then, of course, you have Judith, Judith Collins uh, jump in. It just all looks wrong. You know, whichever way you look at it, it just looks completely wrong. And, you know, and thank you again to Dr. Rashid Buttar, uh for ringing in yesterday from North Carolina, a great medical freedom fighter. And he's just got one thing in mind, and that is to protect people and get the truth out there about what's going on. And they might say whatever they like in the media about yesterday's meeting. It was beautiful. It was um, very emotional, very uh, um, 
very beautiful, very spirit led. It was it was really beautiful to be there. Lots of different people, different races, and yet suddenly it becomes this huge thing about um, um, you know about being a dissemination opportunity for misinformation. Well, they're the misinformation carriers. There's no doubt about it. When over 35,000 scientists, medical professionals and frontline staff sign a declaration called the Barrington Declaration saying that nothing works in this, in this narrative, it's not, it's not honest to the integrity of the science, then you can, you can, you can actually say, well, you know, who's that, who are actually the purveyors and the propagators of the untruth? And I believe it's mainstream media, which leads me to my next topic. So as you, as you would remember uh, last night when I did that livey with um, with Vinny after our epic day yesterday, you know, we had four different media channels, and I say that again, four different media channels come out. One said that the police were concerned about the rally yesterday, which is absolutely absolute rubbish, and I'm so proud of the police. Guess what they did? They let out a statement that um, exonerated us. Awesome, eh? I've got to hand it. Thank you, uh, my mate Grant. Uh, down there, who's the, who was the inspector in charge of um, operations down there. But anyway, um, yeah, they came out and said, no, we didn't say anything of the sort, and we didn't have any c- concerns or um, or issues with the event. So that knocks that out. So that's, I think that was the Radio New Zealand one. So they're liars. The next one is, it's a Trump rally. Now, there was one pair of guides there, and I want to touch on this. There were two dudes that turned up, and they had a big Trump flag. Now, I looked at these guys and I said to my own, said to my own people, I said to, to Tiamara Williams, my deputy leader, I said, hey, look at these two guys with the Trump flag. They don't look right. They don't look natural. They, look, they did not look, look like guys that would have a Trump flag. It was a gigantic blinking thing. You couldn't miss it. And I said to her, these guys don't look right. They didn't interact with anyone. They didn't talk to anyone. They were stood on the side waving their Trump flag. We didn't talk to them, but they looked weird. And next minute, what happens? The media says it's a Trump rally, one flag, you know, and so, you know, so that's debunked, just, just liars, just liars, and then it just goes on, you know, about, you know, um, me doing this and saying that and the rest of it, but of course, I had a bit of a laugh today, because I went into the, uh, into the petrol station before to get myself um, some fuel, and picked up a, (laughs) picked up a newspaper, and Look what we've got here. I don't know if you can see that there. Hey presto. So this is part of the um, this is part of the New Zealand Herald chain, um, NZME, I believe. Uh, this is the Northern Advocate. And so when they do these stories, they send it all they send it all over the through the chain, and it says police watch over protest. You know this is the nonsense. You know it's that they put out here, and uh, they try to brand us as some sort of, you know, um, dangerous system. But what are we? dangerous organisation, we are ordinary Kiwis, mothers, dads, grandfathers, kōros, aunties, nannies, we're all sorts of people from all sorts of backgrounds who know what's going on, we're awake, we see what's going on, and that's just nonsense. So this is your mainstream media for you, and um, you know, just pumping out the stuff, and it was just, as you know, I had I bumped into one of the senior reporters for these for these guys in Northern Advocate uh, the other week, and um, and Whangarei, and he attacked me, and this is a guy that I've known for many years. So anyway, so the misinformation, you know, mainstream media, it's censorable, literally, no pun intended. Um, they're horrible. It's just, we're living in such an age of deception, guys. You know, the best thing that we can do is share this message, please, because I am being heavily shadow banned. I've done it again. It will look like that we were we were coming right again, and um, but they're doing all sorts of things to all of our communications, to all the people that are involved in the movement. Um, so hit the share button. The best thing we can do is to create um, the Māori word is for Tanga, but community to build our community together. If you if we get off um, any of the social media platforms that we use, please go to Freedom Village. Okay, Freedom Village. That's where you'll find us. Freedom Village. Just Google it. You'll find it. Free, Freedom Village community. That's our platform. It's safe. It's secure. And um, thank you to Tiamara and, and Dr. Machi for setting that up for us. Um, but we need to build our community. You guys out there, you need to build up your networks, create groups, you know, speak to like-minded people in your area, work together, support each other, um, you know, even work to, to, with each other to create communication outside of the norms, um, ways to contact each other, um, way to respond to lockdowns together, ways to mobilise together when we do these um, do these protests. 
and um, and just really looking after each other. Yes, we are a team of 4.9 million thereabouts, but we're not the sort of team that the government wants us to be. We're a team of awake people, and we need to stay awake. We need to keep watching and working together to, to support each other because it's a scary time. I hear, hear a lot from people that are scared. I've just received a horrific um, um, email from my lady whose son got killed in Australia last week and they're trying to bring his body back and they're having difficulty with that so I'm going to pay my attention with that but also lastly I want to thank you all for your support um, that you've given us thank you I'm so so grateful we all are we still got a few bills left to pay for me our trip yesterday please put in a little bit if you can to support us we can't do it without it I don't work this is the only thing I do um, I'm probably a little bit fucking my and shy to ask for money but I'm learning that I can't because I've got you know I don't have a job this is my job you know, our brother Vinny, his, his, he said to me, he said, Billy, you know, he, he said, don't, you know, ask, ask the people if they think there's value in what you do, they'll support you. And I know you do. And, you know, you, a lot of people have um, started putting in, um, resetting up the regular payments of 10, 20 bucks or whatever. But all of it is greatly appreciated. You don't know. I mean, it helped um, pay for last Saturday. We've got that um, paid off. We've got um, We've got this week to pay off. And that's before we start doing anything else, whether we look at our own um, bills that we have to deal with. And it is, the words fuck them are, it is a bit of a shy thing to do. But um, but I guess you know where I'm coming from with that. I don't need to labour that point. Anyway, in closing, guys, I just want to wish you all a safe weekend. If you go out swimming, please be safe. Look after your babies by water. Slip, slop, slap, as they like to say when we were kids. Put that sunscreen on. And, um, and stay vigilant. They could lock us down at any time. Make sure that the food is stocked up in your houses. Make sure that, you know, you've got extra fuel. Just keep watching, guys. I'll, I'll be watching. And um, and if there's anything emer of an emergency nature and urgent over the next day while I have rest, Sabbath rest, I'll be back on to let you know. But other than that, let's keep together. The fight starts again um, as soon as uh, this, this uh, Sabbath rest is over for me and we're onto it again and into it again and... And I went to Waitangi today. We got home late last night. Finally got to sleep at one o'clock this morning because we were so excited after our day. And um, I was up again early, up on my way to Waitangi to meet with the Rangatira up there. And it was awesome to be in their company again. And we've got some awesome plans, guys. We can win. Stay encouraged. Stay hopeful. But stay alert and ready to move. Bless you all. Have a good good um, evening. And, uh, and relax. Relax, guys. We're going to do this together. Take care. Kia ora. NZPP, New Zealand Public Party. I haven't been saying this for a while. Your voice, because we say the stuff that we get called nutters and conspiracy theorists and uh, and uh, agitators. Yep, that's all, all true, but we know that what we're dealing with is fact and observation. So we'll keep calling it out. And it was very, a very proud moment, to, again, to be standing on the steps of Parliament, leading that corrupt House, know that we know that they're communists and we know that they're corrupt. So we'll keep saying it. We're your power because God gives me the breath. You give us the mandate and the support to do it. We'll do the job and we'll stand there to, to defend our families together. And we're your party because this is your movement. It's a movement more than a party. You know that. But it's all of ours. It's not mine. It's not just one person's. It's not Tiamatas. It's not Maureen's. It's not Rob's. It's all of ours. All right, guys. Have a good one. Take care. Kia ora. All the best, guys.